everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joy Evans. And I'm weak. This is Nova Aetis Renaissance. Um, this is a gigantic game where, I, honestly, I think the cover yeah. is... Oh, whatever. I, this is a game that is an adventure game, but it's really, it's really a dungeon crawler. It is. I mean, it does focus on the whole battling and all that. Yeah, there's going to be, you're going to be jumping from going through a story and moving across Italy during the Renaissance time, but with monsters. Right. And, As uh, there should be. And wearing clothing that's more appropriate for parties than fighting. Right. <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to give you some overview of this. This is a campaign style game, mm -hmm. and then we'll be back. There's a lot going on in this game, and I'm just going to give you kind of a basic overview. There is a large map here of Italy, and you'll be moving from city to city. Numbers on them showing encounters that go in between. And then in between, there are different buildings and actions you can take when you're in a city. But that is all really minor. What you'll have is emissions. So you'll start with 0.0, .0 although the game does have a full tutorial that you can walk through. It kind of just shows you how to play the game. In these envelopes, you'll have some cards. And you'll start with this one, the prologue. And what this will do, it will tell you all the components you need, and it tells you what the key is. And then it will say, reveal card one. So then you reveal card one, and it shows you how to set up the map. Now you'll have boards and different icons and things that you'll do to that map. You'll have miniatures that match your hero and the enemies. And then it will tell you to read something from the book. So in here we have a whole book, and this campaign comes with the League of Cambrai. And you'll find a section and read that. Sometimes these sections will tell you to do something. They'll lead to other sections. You'll be jumping around in a book. Different things might happen. And they might lead you to other cards. And once you're done with all the different cards that are in a set, it might say something like, hey, go to another one. Or it might tell you in the book, go to envelope 0.1. And you can save your, your game in between the different missions. But that's essentially, that's the large overview of the game. Now, most of the game is going to be revolving around tactical missions on boards. There are some times where you'll find a room like this, and you can spend time units to d look at different things in a room, and this could happen in the middle of combat. There are four characters that you'll be playing with, and there's stretch goals and things that will add other characters. Valerio, which is sort of, he's a squire, but he's basically a knight. Sophia's uh, sort of a rogue. Uh, Vincenzo is a wizard. And Rebecca is essentially, you know, kind of like a cleric style. Each of them have stats here, their time, how good they are at melee and magic, their hit points. And you'll keep track of that stuff. This is actually a card that fits in here. And as the game goes by, you're going to be able to upgrade to skills. You come with another, so let's say we're looking at Valerio, you have another whole sheet which shows you not only their special ability that they have, but all these skills over here as you get them, it will keep track of them. And as the game goes by, you'll see that Valerio can become a knight or a mercenary. So if he becomes a mercenary, you'll have a completely different card that you'll stick up in here with even more skills and some changes that might occur or maybe he wants to be the knight on the other side. And again, each of these comes with its own reference board. So this is how the characters are. These are your main characters. This wheel here is how combat is run. You will have tokens matching each of your characters and the different monsters in play, and this will simply move to them, and then you'll spend time units, and then it will move to the next unit, and they'll spend time units, and it will just keep going around until the scenario has finished in some order or fashion. Here's half the miniatures of the game. The other half are in the box still. You can see that there's some kind of fantastical stuff in the game, a lot of enemies. But you're often going to be using dice for combat. And many times you're going to use either a special skill or a weapon. It will cost a certain amount of action points. The enemies are going to be programmed off their cards. Enemy cards will tell you how much time they move on the wheel, you know, their stats that they have, and then special things. This guy will shoot at you, but then he might take some actions to reload. And this guy can cause bleed and can do damage to you. And at the bottom here, if you fight them off, 
they show some icons where you can get loot. In this game, you're going to be drawing from different loot decks, and then you'll be getting materials, and you'll be using those materials to build items and weapons that you can build or use as the game goes by. The dice are used in combat often, and there are symbols in some of them which might come into play. Sometimes you just roll dice for a test, and then you need fives and hires to get it or you're trying to hit someone, you're gonna roll higher than their defense. The enemy always hits you, and then you roll a defensive roll to see how many of those hits actually cause damage to you or that you block. In this game, the, the enemy actually never really rolls. You roll to attack them, you roll to defend against their automatic attack. But there's all sorts of things to do. If you find a ladder, you can climb up the ladder. There's different spells that you can cast. There's all sorts of actions that you can take. Like I said, you might be in one of those rooms and do that action rather than just fighting. And that is sort of the game in a very, very small nutshell. Like I said, there's a tutorial that will show you exactly. It will walk you through how the enemies fight. And finally, we'll get to a point where it kind of releases you, but it shows you how you can move on the board. It shows you what stats you're checking for. Now, when it comes to actual rule book for the game, the rule book is in different sections here, so here it is, for example, game area, generic skills, force movement, focus points, advanced equipment cards, there's all sorts of things in here, with a table of contents, but with no glossary, which is kind of mind-boggling to me, because if I'm looking for something and it's not in that spot, I need to know which spot to go to. But this is what players will be often referring to, although there's another smaller book, that in this book, it tells you what all the different things are. Status tokens and different effects, which for some reason they include it in a different book. I want to complain very strongly here, and I already did a little bit in the overview, yeah. about the rule book situation. So annoying. The, the tutorial has the cards and the reading stuff yeah. in the book itself, which was confusing. They're like, here's the, take this card. I'm like, where's the card? Oh, it's printed on the page. Not a big deal, but the tutorial has a lot of rules, and I'm, I'm glad for tutorials to teach the game. But then the rule book not actually being a rule book, but just being a listing of all the different parts of the game. And then I'm looking for something. I'm like, okay, what letter would this be under? I don't know. Or even how to start the game is in the very back of the rule book under campaign, which I didn't know that's where it was. And then there's another rule book. Mm -hmm. for the, I, the amount of time we had to look up rules and rules and rules. Then you couple that with, every time you get a scenario, they're like, here's how you set the scenario up. Here's all the tokens you need. And you were just like, okay, where's the house to do this and build this and go here? And it just was a lot of work just to play the game. And that's that's something that that's something that's going on now. It's like, hey, let's give you three rule books so we can divide things into the rule books, which is fine in theory. But they do need one full chapter. Everything you need to know to do your first mission is here. That's it. And it's not that hard to say because you are thumbing through things, and that's what took the most time and made this seem more complex than really it was. Yeah, it's not a particularly complex game, I think, although. Some of the iconography is not easy to understand. No. And then there's also like, wait, red is physical, blue is magic. When I right. have this thing, what do I do here? You you learn it after a while. I just didn't think it was intuitive. No, it's not intuitive at all. It's very icon heavy. You know, and a lot of the upgrades aren't. It does a different type of system than a lot of these types of games, which is good. But again, it takes a bit to wrap your head around it. Yeah, so the story is... Fine. Right. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I, I, this is made to be a story game. I mean, I like the beats of the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we're, we're in the middle of a battle. Like, there was one point we're hiding out in a house. Love and there's that. bad guys patrolling outside. You're like, well, that's cool. And, you know, we can sneak out or we can just bust out the front door and fight them. Uh, this game does run into the thing of you, at the beginning of the game, are heroes of some disrepair. Yes. I, I, I didn't feel particularly powerful. No, no. In fact, we almost died in the tutorial, and that's what them having upgraded us. We had mm -hmm. upgraded abilities, and we almost died because there's some pretty hefty swings of luck on the dice. You could be like, I got you this time. No, I do not. That's And I just wasted my turn, and the enemies are like, yeah. now we're going to punch you back. 
Right. And now, I will say, this has moments, it's really ebbs and flows. I mean, there are times that you're kind of almost bored with the battling. You're like, okay, you're going through the movements. You know what you're going to do two moves ahead. And, but then also, there are times it's exciting when you are looking out those windows and you see, not to ruin the story, certain things happening and you get involved. I do like the action wheel on the battling. It kind of gives it chaos. It's not a certain order. You can forego certain actions to kind of change the order. It kind of gives a chaos of battling but also it does kind of get more tedious too. So I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate 3, which is a okay. uh, online, I mean, not online, but it's a video game that's an RPG. Right. And there's a lot of comparisons I have to this. There's really? initiative and things like that. The thing is with Baldur's Gate, as soon as a battle is over, it devolves, it instantly lets you just run around and do stuff, right? But if there's yep. a battle, everything freezes. Now, this has like, the battle's over, but it's not over. So we're still taking turn-based actions to explore the house, to move around, and there, it just, it felt clunky, and I was getting very tired of looking up rules all the time, and I don't think the battling system's particularly interesting. Roll these dice, try to get over this number, look for symbols, um, I need to compare this to that number, and I just felt it was a lot of work, and it, but it also didn't feel innovative. It felt no. like they were desperately looking for some new combat system that hasn't been done before, and they found one, I guess, but it just wasn't that interesting. No, I agree. Where this shine, I think, is, is once you're in a building and you get to explore and look at the different areas on the cards and you kind of branch out. I love that. That is my favorite part of this game. How almost a seventh continent feel to me where you are exploring this, you go in different directions. I did like that part. But sadly, that's not the majority of the game. And the, and and some of the missions in the game are are interesting. Like, mm -hmm. oh, who's who's the... There was one that, like, who's the traitor? Or, no, who's the... Yeah, the the secret assassin or whatever. Right. That was cool. Yep. Um, I just struggle. The things that keep me from loving this is, one is a big one, and that's setup time. The 3D buildings are cool. They take a long time to set up. To set up the map, it seems like it's a, like a short thing to do. Like, oh, that map's not that big. I'm still kind of glued to the idea of flipping a page in a book, and there's the map on the page. Well, it's where you're leaning now. Now, we'll say certain things in theory are going to be great, like the 3D buildings, if you have somewhere you can store those and not have to assemble them every time, maybe it'll work. But then also the vision blocking, depending on where you sit at the table. I agree. That's a pain. And this box does not have, it has ways to store the miniatures, but not particularly good ways to store the tokens. No. So I'm constantly like, what token am I looking for? Oh, there's some new monsters. Hang on. I got to find that right. monster card. And... Some things are good. And it's also weird to be jumping from a card to the book, to the card, to the book, to the book, to the book, to the book, to the card, to right. the card. And that can be dizzying. But I do like, though, that you can finish a mission and or not finish. It has fail forward. I love that. That's great. That's, yeah. You mess up, you still mm -hmm. move forward, and you can go to different missions based on that. Yep. So that's interesting. You can have side quests and go off and do those. Yep. So there's a lot of good things in this game, but what keeps me from wanting to come back and play through the whole campaign or put this... I mean, because we only have so much time to play campaign games. Right. This one doesn't make my top tier. And and I'll say my, my rating for this is a six. I don't think there's anything really bad about it, but it just doesn't grip me. Part of it is the story. you got to have an interesting story. I don't think this one has one. It has to have pretty smooth either... I think combat needs to be either super complex, not super complex, but complex and intriguing, like mm -hmm. Oathsworn, Gloomhaven. Their combat is involved, but it's so cool. You're like, wow, this is cool combat. Or Fast and Furious. Those are the two kinds of combat I think that you, you have. This one's somewhere in between where it's complicated a little bit and, oh, I need to check this and roll this dice against that. It's just not particularly fun. You know, it's not interesting. I don't right. feel like I'm doing anything strategic. I'm like... This is my weapon. I will use this weapon because that is what I have. Yes, as time goes by, you get more abilities to use. You do. But out the gate, definitely they should have given me more abilities because at the beginning you're like, I am big guy. I will hit. I am wizard. I will shoot. I missed. Done. And again, there's a lot of games that do that quick, but then they're not so complex on how it works. 
Right, and that's okay. So um, I'm coming a bit higher on, at a six point five, only because I like some of the things with this. I like the skills, the customizations for each character. Um, one thing is you have to have a balanced party, or you're going to well, I mean, you're going to lose. But it is balanced, right? Because you're using these four characters. We didn't touch right. any of the Kickstarter stuff. No, 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 no. But then also, and I like to fail forward. I like to explore, explore it inside. But the biggest part is a battle mechanic in a game like this to me, and that just kind of fell flat for me. And that yeah. was, and then also the fact that you can't just open this up. You're looking at three hours probably as far as setup, then reorganization, tear down, and all that. I did not like the setup and tear down a lot. I mean, no. like, oh, we got to pack the game up. Oh, <laughs> you know? that was that. That's the biggest thing that's going to keep this from hitting the table, and that is why I keep it down below a seven because I don't think it'll hit the table that often. Well, there you go, folks. That's Nova Ada's Renaissance. It's a humongous game. You probably, there's going to be people in the comments, love it. Tell people why you like it so much. Right. You know, get to, give some counterpoints to that. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Joey Evans. And we're going to off to kill the, I don't know, another guard. There's we'll a lot of guards in this game. We'll just kill them all.